Prayer is going to be critical for us as a church, but more importantly, it's going to be critical for you as a single individual. That without prayer being central in your life, you're going to miss out on what God's wanting to do because it is prayer that connects us to his heart. And it's in, in that connection, we, it, he translates his heart to us through his spirit. And we've got to be there, church. we all got to step up in that area, and we got to be able to step into that and watch what God will do because he's got great things for us as individuals in the church corporately for us to do. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Are you alive today? Yes. Okay, good, because you need to be alive. Not dead, you need to be alive. So um, I sent out a text this morning saying that we were going to make a, a pretty exciting announcement. And I'll get to that in a moment. We'll kind of build up to that a little bit. Um, but last, I just want to go over last week because I know a lot of people were missing last week. And you know, one thing I hate about YouTube is people can go, nah, stay up till 2 o'clock in the morning on, on New Year's Eve. I don't feel like going to church. I'll just catch it on YouTube. Well, the truth is most people don't catch it on YouTube. They say they'll catch it on YouTube, but they don't catch it on YouTube, okay? So I hate the fact that technology causes people to go, I don't need to go to church today. Because I, I said this a, a few weeks ago, you need to be in church. Amen. We need to be in church because God said don't forget, forsake the gathering of the saints, which means don't forsake gathering at church. Yeah. We need each other. We need to be together yeah. and so on and so forth. And so I hate that. So I'm going to go over some things that I talked about real quick um, last week and because we unveiled a new mission statement last week. We went away from our wordy one, which I said last, last week that um, everything's becoming simp simplified. Websites are becoming simplified, less words. People don't want to turn into a, a website of a church and spend the next 17 days reading what they believe. They don't. They want to be able to get, and get a quick snapshot of it. And so we, we changed our, our uh, mission statement going into this new building, into this new year, to pray, share Jesus, grow, and repeat. Got that prayer? Share Jesus, grow, and repeat. And Craig talked about them uh, a little bit this morning as well. So... These four things, very simply, Jesus did. Read the gospel, right? You read the gospels, you see that Jesus prayed. We see he often went away by himself and he prayed. He had to get away from his guys. And he had to get by himself and he had to pray. And he went away and he prayed. So that's a good thing. We need to do that ourselves in our own life. We need to get away, get into a prayer closet, and we need to pray. Whether it be a prayer closet, a prayer car, a prayer hut, whatever it is, we need to get away from general life, right? And then Jesus, wherever he went, he shared himself. Because he was Jesus, right? <laughs> Everywhere he went, he shared himself. He shared his life with other people. And, and he was the gospel. He was grace personified. He was gospel walking with feet. He was grace walking with faith, feet. He was God Emmanuel with us, walking amongst us. So he shared himself wherever he went. And then he raised up disciples. He, he grew up people. And now we're called to raise up disciples, but we are also called to be disciples, which means we're growing in our walk with the Lord and our understanding with the Lord. And we just keep doing that over and over again. Pray, share Jesus, uh, grow, repeat. Come on, say it with me. Pray, share Jesus, grow, repeat. Let's do that again. That was fun. Pray, share Jesus, grow, repeat. Now for you. Yes. So, uh, so today we want to announce another major shift that's coming. I'm pretty excited about it, and I'll give you the history of how we landed here. Uh, but we are changing our name of our church. Yes, wow. Let's put it up there. Nice. Alive Church. Oh, come on! <laughs> if we put up Word of Truth Fellowship, you'd get tired of reading it, right? After you got through the third word. Come on. A live church. Are you alive today? Yes. Should we not be in a live church? Yes. Okay, so let me give you kind of how we came to this, okay? Because this has been um, a little bit of a process, like years of a process. And so let me just kind of fill you in on... Um, where it's been. As, as we were like 11 years, coming up on 11 years ago now, when we were getting ready to start this church, um, the four crazy friends, uh, Darren and Laura, Deirdre and I, uh, we were praying about this. As the time came closer, uh, we really began very diligently about praying about a name. 
okay? And so as, as we, we even took a, a, a trip away, I can't remember if it was one day away or two days away, and we just got away into a, a hotel. We just began to pray and intercede and pray for the church and, and seek his face and, and stuff. And so coming out of that, we got to have a name, right? You just don't have a church. It's the name of our church. It's church. Hey, come to church. I guess it would work, uh, but it wasn't going to work for us. So in the process of praying, I really felt like the Holy Spirit was putting on my heart this name, Word of Truth Fellowship. Now, I was excited about it, going, yeah, yeah, because it encapsulated what we wanted in a church, right? Yeah. We wanted to be a part of a church that was going to preach the Word of God. Yeah. Come on. Not shy away from, from talking about sin, not shy away from anything, but talk about the whole Word of God. Because you, if, if you've been around in churches, you can kind of see there's different things going on even today. And it seems like it's getting worse where people aren't even talking out of the Bible anymore. They're, they're reading stuff out of books that aren't even having to do with the Bible. And they're calling that a God thing. And it, yeah, there's a lot of good books out there, but they're not the Bible and stuff. And so um, we wanted to be this church that wanted to stay true to the Word of God, that would preach the Word of God, not compromise the Word of God, not water the Word of God down but preach the word of God. And you know what? It helps because one of the prophetic words um, during my life was God's called you to preach the word. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? He didn't say God called you to preach a watered down word. He didn't call you to preach a, a, another gospel. He called you to preach the word. And so to embrace that, there was just sense in my heart that, hey, word of truth fellowship is right on. And so it's kind of interesting that as time went on, I ran into this guy, and I was sharing with him. Uh, we were sharing kind of life back and forth. And it turned out he was a Christian. And uh, he asked me what the name of our church was. And I said, it's, it's, we, we were named Board of Truth Fellowship. And this was his first comment to me. Well, is that biblical? <laughs> is that biblical? I said, yeah, it's biblical. Because the denomination that I come from, our name is biblical. You know, well, ours is biblical, too. So, here's the thing. It is biblical. Did you know that? That word of truth is biblical. It's actually mentioned in Scripture several times. Word of truth is there. And so, I proceeded to go through some Scriptures with this guy. Just kind of, it shut him off. Because there was this pride that began to rise up. Well, our denomination is biblical. Our name comes from a biblical word in the Bible. It's like, awesome. So does our sort of watch. <laughs> So I did that and kind of cut, uh, shut off. And I believe actually Elliot ran into that um, years ago when she was uh, stewarding for the airlines that she was working for in one of the places that she was at. Some guy came up to her because she was relaying that to me as well. And isn't that interesting how even a name of church could become a religious thing where really our name is biblical. And so let me just entertain you today um, with some scripture concerning the word of truth. It says, do not snatch your word of truth from me for your regulations are my only hope what do you have to say now well if that's not enough let's go New Testament by the word of truth by the power of God by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left cha-ching 2 Timothy 2.15 work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval be a good worker one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains Word of truth. James 1.5 says this, Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that he might be a kind of first fruit of his creation. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. That God would put in my heart a name that would actually shut people up. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Come on. That would actually shut people up with, with this religious attitude of, well, our name is biblical. Well, ours is too. And it wasn't something that I planned out. It was just something that dropped into my heart, and then there it was. It's scripture confirmed it for us. So as time has gone on, and, and I'm just being transparent with you guys today. Can I be transparent with you guys? Because I'm going to do it anyways, but I'm going to ask Thank you. As, as time went on, um, God has brought uh, some really dear friends into Deirdre and R's lives. And you guys know them, Daryl Corbin, right? And then you guys remember Doug and Lois Cotton. They were up here last, last year for the men's conference. And so they brought these two guys, uh, these, these two pastors, three pastors, into our lives. And we really cherished their friendship. 
We cherish their input because we've been able to, because they've done this a lot longer than I have, and Daryl's younger than I am, and, and Doug is older, and Doug and Lois is older than we are. And so it's nice to have a younger voice coming in and an older voice coming in. But both of them have been doing this a whole lot longer than I have. And so it's nice to have that kind of relationship where I can go and bounce things off of them, bounce things that God is, is sh showing me and, and get some feedback and that kind of stuff. And it's been an awesome, and we cherish their input. Well, about five, six years ago, Daryl begins to go, hey, dude, what is up with your guys' name? And I'm like, oh, what? What's wrong with the name? And then a little bit later, Doug starts going, man, what's, what's up? How'd you guys come up with that name? And so that be kind, began to become this little bit of a battle of don't mess with the name. <laughs> don't mess with the name because we prayed about this. I prayed about this. And, and this is what God gave. Don't mess with the name is kind of where I was, right? Because you're going to defend it, right? How many, times, how many of you know that sometimes we can put a stake on a hill and we're going to die there? <laughs> and sometimes we're going to die wrong. Come on. You were slain because you stood there pridefully and didn't open up. And so this was a wrestling match for years, this wrestling back and forth of, what's up with the name, man? Come on, you should change the name. And here's what they said about the name. Because good friends are not going to say, hey, what's up with the name, and just let you explain it. They're going to tell you what they see with the name. And so this, this is what they began to say. The name gives a bad connotation. Just the name by itself gives this idea that you're right, everybody else is wrong. Right? It's a prideful name. It's a religious name. And with a prideful religious name, there could be a tendency that you create, you, you attract people that way. Right? Are you following me? And so it's like, hmm, we don't want that. And so even this, we're still wrestling with this thing. I'm still wrestling with, with this thing. And when they were up at the last men's conference last October, um, we're sitting down having an elder dinner um, with Doug and Lois and um, Daryl. And you got to love, you got to love them. But right there in the middle of the dinner, they're like, oh, hey, what's up with the name? <laughs> like, going. So we actually had a, a, ta a, a table discussion about it and stuff. And so um, they said, you know, a good time to make a shift in the name is as you're getting ready to go into your new building. It's a good time. If you're going to make a shift, that's a good time to do it. As you're ready to make a big step of faith, that's the time to make a big step of name change. And just so you know, it's not abnormal for churches to change names. If you look at, at the recent, most recent one in the area that I'm aware of would be uh, Cerdo Baptist Church. They just changed their name to Grace Point. Well, that's the fourth time in their history that they've changed their name. Okay, so it's not abnormal for churches to change names. I think sometimes it could be a good thing because sometimes we can kind of get stuck in one thing and be stuck by identifying it by a name and not branch out into something bigger, something better, something more fulfilled in, in the sense of there's, there's more to our Christian walk than just, be, just hearing the, the, the truth of God's word. There's more to it than that. There's more to just being discipled, sitting here getting discipled on a Sunday morning. Um, there's more to it. There's a lot more to Christianity than that. And so when, when uh, we started this process of, of seriously going, okay, let's look into this, let's, let's start uh, brainstorming some names, and it was a very small group of people that were working together with that name. And, and so we settled on Alive, because I believe Alive is what God wants his church to be. Amen. Not dead church, not lukewarm church, but Alive. Alive church has a lot to say. A lot to say. Um, and I don't, I won't get into that today because we don't have time. But what I like to do is, <coughs> the logo, where the logo go? <laughs> Live! <laughs> Live church, nice and simple, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. My daughter designed that, Aaliyah. Uh, and one of the things that we wanted to do, because everything is going simple, is to go simple. And, and easy and stuff. And so live church, she designed the, the actual, how that was printed out. She did that with her own hand. Looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Yeah. But she's been busy redesigning a new website. A new website. 
And so she's going to throw that up there real quick. It's not 100% complete, but it's enough to kind of show you guys a little bit today because she's been, been working her, her fingers off doing the stuff that she does that I have no clue about what she's doing. And she's tapping into the, the hot spot right now. There we go. This was working earlier today. Why is it whenever we want to actually do something that we're connected to the Wi-Fi for. It doesn't want to work when we're ready to make it work. I like it. It's simple. <laughs> it is simple. Do you see what we believe? <laughs> Go ahead, Kent. Go back there. So while they're while that they're pulling that up, and I won't look. You just let me know when it's up there. Um, just just to do this for you. Um, a name change doesn't mean that we're changing who we are. That's right. Okay, we're going to continue to preach the word of God. That's not changing. Um, we we are going. I'm going to be unveiling the next few weeks some vision. And if you weren't here last week, I announced that we would not be doing a vision banquet this year because it takes about three thousand dollars to put that on, and so we don't want to spend that money now. We want to get in the building, right? Can I hear an amen? amen. Can you forego a, a free dinner? Um, and we'll just have vision casting um, for the month of January, and if it goes further, it goes further um, as we move into the house. We've got some things we're working on, a lot of things we're working on behind the scenes that are going to be changing protocol and some things that we're going to do. Um, I think it's going to be all exciting. Um, one of the things that comes with this name is, is really a heart to start focusing on people, because that's why we're here. We're not here for ourselves, we're here for people. Now, let me back up, because I know some of you heard we're not here first. ourselves. Yes, we're here to love on one another. But the main purpose we're here, as we're passing through, because remember, we're pilgrims passing through. This is not our homestead. As we're passing through, we have a job to do, and that's to expand God's kingdom. Yeah. And so part of um, the name change is going to become a little bit more focused on the lost. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because that is why the church exists, to see the lost get saved. Um, and so... I would, I would say that um, over the first 11 years, and I've been preaching about this for two years, and I'll keep preaching on it until we get it as a, as a group, that we've been self-focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've been self-focused. We've been focused on self. Our services have been, uh, been kind of centered around us and not the lost. And so... Um, part of this is going to be, there are going to be some changes, but it's going to be changes that are going to incorporate who we are, but these new changes are going to make us better. Uh, because we need to get better. There is a world out there that needs to be saved. And the church is a place where God wants to use it to happen. Not just here or in our new building or in a building, but outside of the church. Um, and it's, it's time, that's why it's important for us to be praying, it's time to get connected to God so we can get connected to people. Because Jesus was connected to God. And when he was connected to God, he went out. He didn't go in. Mm -hmm. Listen very closely because I'm giving you a little hint, a little hint, a hint to the message coming here in a couple weeks or so. When Jesus went to, to go spend time with the Father, his, his quiet place, he, didn't, he then didn't come out of that and go into the synagogue. Are you Amen. hearing me? Amen. He went out. He spent time with the Lord, got into his presence, had his Holy Spirit time with him, and he went out into the world. And if we come and, and, and we have our, our time in our quiet place, and that's all it ever becomes, and we never translate that out, there's a disconnect in what is happening in our quiet place. Because to be in our quiet place, gosh, I'm starting to preach this message. To be in that quiet place has to translate outward because that's God's heart. And in that quiet place, that's where we're getting God's heart. Come on. We get his heart like no other place than being in that secret place of prayer. That secret time of worship where it's just you and him. Where we're communing with him and having that intimate relationship. It's in that place where we get his heart through the Holy Spirit working in us. If we don't come out of that time focused on the loss, then something is seriously wrong with our quiet time. Okay, come on, church. Yeah. Something is, hey, something is wrong with our quiet time. So, Aaliyah, a little snapshot of the, the new website. Are you going to talk? Oh, you don't have a... Huh. I'll throw that $800 mic around. I don't think so. 
By the way, the pictures on our website has come from a professional in-house, and that would be Kent and Donna. <laughs> See, they, uh, we, they were asked, hey, can you take some photos? For, we're redoing our website, but we didn't let them know that we were redoing our name and our website. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, the design for the website, I just want to say, was very much, you know, you start thinking about the fact that um, if you've been a regular, if you come to our church or you've attended our church regularly, you probably don't visit our website very often. Um, if we were to take a poll, I'm sure a lot of us don't, and that's because we are here and we know what's going on, we know what this church believes, we, um, you know, we know who the leaders are, we know what ministries are available, and we hear the messages, and we know what's going on, events, and stuff like that. So really a website um, is supposed to be more outward focused towards people who don't go to our church and stuff like that. So that was kind of the idea that went into this website is how can we, um, you know, be relatable, be real with people. And um, because, yeah, we do want to be outward focused, and we do want to have relationships with people. <coughs> Um, so anyways, it's, you know, welcome. We're glad you're here, basically. We're, we're talking to other people, basically. And so, and I, I will say the website's not done yet. Um, it's still under construction. Um, but kind of just, we'll have some photos of us, who we are. We've got that. And then um, just in here, uh, we, you know, wanted it to be one of those things where it's like, okay, people who don't go to our church, what do they want to know? Um, so basically, if you click here, it's gonna take them to a place where it kind of talks about what a typical Sunday morning service looks like. Um, and then we also have another section where um, there's more questions, things that people wanna know, like um, where do I park, you know, even just stuff like that. But if you had never been to our church before, what, what are some things that you would wanna know? So, um, and then down here, just ways that people can connect with us and um, keep up on things. And then if you go to the about section, we basically have a page about what we believe, who the leaders are in the church, um, the different ministries that we have here, um, all that, still working on it. Um, and then, you know, messages, latest video messages from YouTube, We'll have some audio messages on there probably. We've got our calendar that has events that are going on in the church, a way for people to contact us, and a map. This is, by the way, our new address of the new building right now is what's on there. Um, and then a link to push pay if you want to give. So it's pretty simple. There's not a million things going on um and so yeah that's kind of what we were going for a little thing um that's kind of neat go to about and scroll down to the bottom of the page or no i'm sorry yeah. um what to expect i think that's where it was is that the one that has the map at the bottom oh you mean the frequently asked questions oh there you go it's nice there's a little map of how the building's laid out for people who are coming in new um, that they could see where they have children and where they're going to end up going and important to know where the bathrooms are because we don't want anybody to go to the bathroom, um, not where the bathrooms are. Um, so, um, so we good? We're good. We're good. So how's that? Huh? So we've got so many good things coming down the pipe. We're going to be putting a, a, a push on. Get ready. Are you ready? As T.D. Jakes would say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, right? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? There's going to be a push to get all of you connected to a small group. Come on. Life, church, is more than just Sunday. It's sharing life another day of the week, at least one. Okay? And so it becomes very important that the church get connected into small groups. Um, and we have a really simple layout for that where you could even bring friends that don't know the Lord and they would fit real well into that small group and they could come in and be in on a discussion from a Sunday morning message. They don't even have to listen to the message. They can just come in here. And I've said this before that many times people don't wake up on a Sunday morning and go, hey, I think I'm going to go to church today. Where do I go? 
they actually come in through another church function before they actually step in on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And so we want to see our, our small groups be smaller in number so it affords us the ability to then go out publicly with our group. Mm -hmm. Listen. Listen. It's too easy to hunker everything down in a house. Come on. And be in a house. If we're in a smaller group, then we can go out at a Sherry's or at a Starbucks and have our meeting in public for an hour. Because that's where we're, where we're gauging our small group is in an hour format. Have a relationship and then be public. And for some, that might help you with boldness. Come on, this has been thought out, very well thought out. It might help you with boldness if you're now out in public sharing your faith in a little group. You have somebody that's bringing you coffee or maybe you feel like you're you uh, want some dessert, you get some dessert or something, if you're at a place that can do that, and then you have somebody waiting on you. You have somebody that has the ability to go, hey, we're a church, can we pray for you for something? Right there are all open doors that we don't have if we're hunkered down in a house all the time. Yeah. Okay, Am I, are you following me? Yeah. These are things, sometimes the pastor has to give a little bit of a kick in the butt. Okay? Because we get into these habits of of everything being so internal that we live internally. Right. Everything becomes internal. And God's saying, no, when I ripped the veil in half, when Christ died, I opened up and released my spirit to go. It's not now contained behind a, 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 a curtain. It's not contained in a building. It's contained in you, but I'm wanting you to go out. Yeah. And so sometimes we just get out. I'm not saying every Sunday or every small group meeting you got to get out. Um, out, but let's maybe do 50% of what we're doing. Maybe we come into a home, go out. Come into a home, go out. But just be able to, to be able to get out with our faith instead of hiding it in the closet with us. Are we okay? Come on, these are good things, church. And as we engage in them and get behind the vision, good things are going to happen. Miracles are going to happen. Stuff that we've been believing for inside the church is now going to happen outside the church. Because that's his heart. And it's his plan. Amen. And you choose. Hey, we're coming back to choose. You choose to be a part of that. Amen. And my encouragement is choose it. Because there's real life when we choose to do things God's way. Yeah, man. Real life. I would have gotten there today with Zoe life, which we'll get into next week. But if we're alive, we'll experience Zoe life. Amen. So that will be a sound bite for next, year, next, next week. Yeah. If we're alive, you'll experience the Zoe life. All right, let's pray. Why don't you stand? Father, we come before you today, and we just thank you for new beginnings and new opportunities and, and uh, uh, new ground that we will enter in as we step out in faith into our own building, Lord, and begin to step out and live a life of faith. You know, not just talk about it, but start stepping into it, Father God. Father, I just thank you right now. I just speak and declare this, that as fathers, we step out in faith in our personal life and in our corporate life, Lord God. Great things are going to begin to happen. We're going to begin to see the life of Jesus flowing out of us. We're going to begin to see the things that Jesus did when he walked on this earth. Father, we will begin to step into that and experience that type of life as a believer. Father, forgive us for living a, a lukewarm, mundane Christian life in America. Forgive us for that, Father. Father, I pray right now a release of boldness, a release and vision in our personal lives to step into this season, Lord God, that you are taking us into. That, Father, we will fulfill the purposes you have for us here in Kitsap County. And in the end, Lord, we pray that your name be magnified, that it will be glorified. And that, Father, you would pour out in a mighty way in Jesus' name and everybody said. Amen. Amen.